Hi there, thanks for joining us right here on The Nation. I'm Jessie Chahel and today's topic that concerns the entire nation is the topic of public service announcements and how creatively they are put forward to the communities at large and how much we are aware of these social issues and how much uh, we actually take action upon uh, these. And my guest in the studio today is filmmaker and producer Jason Lim, who has of late been producing short videos that really emphasize on these social issues that we have, something that really concerns the reality of things right here in Malaysia, our social issues that we face, reflecting the fabric of our societies, of our communities, um, real life, real situations. Uh, Jason, welcome to the show today. Hi, How Jason. are you? Good morning. Pleasure. I'm fantastic. Pleasure to have you on the show and to talk about uh, really how how you're, you're viewing the country, the world at large, and how these issues that we uh, shun so easily, that we think doesn't affect you, me, uh, is affecting a lot of other people around the country, and um, how your videos are trying to change these perceptions and really trying to experiment with where our heart is, where our soul really truly is at the moment. Um, you started out making short movies, short films, um, and uh, from then on I think it has perked your interest to go even further, so much so that your videos have been shared on social media, Facebook, um, uh, Twitter, and it's uh, gone on uh, to stimulate a lot of people, in fact to VIPs and royalties even highlighting uh, these videos. Let's look um, at the first video, uh, perhaps uh, Born a Racist, which is something that uh, you've just done. Uh, tell us a bit about this video. Thank you, Jesse. The film Born and Races, it's actually, the purpose of the film Born and Races is to prove that no one is born a racist. And children are actually born colorblind. And it comes to a point when they start seeing colors. They start judging everything with colors and making everything much more difficult in life. So this film Born and Races was to prove a point, a very simple point, that no one is born a racist. Mm -hmm. Tell us, Jason, why why is it you do what you do, and how did you choose on doing this uh, for a living? For a living, I think it's it's really difficult to 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 um, categorize it as for a living. But why I do this is because it definitely makes a change. Every film I do, every time I script a film, every time I try to make a film, I'm very scared. I subject myself to criticism, scrutiny. Which you've had, had a lot of. <laughs> which I had a lot of, obviously. And it's very heartbreaking. Every film, you spend time, blood, sweat and tears trying to make a film. And uh, you, I, you, you, I accept it that I'm subjecting myself to scrutiny, criticism and every single element out there the moment I put it up. But I need to understand that <coughs> this film is doing something good for the society. The films I do is meant to raise civic consciousness, moral ethics, moral values. And um, I can say that not everyone on this planet has, you know, is not perfect. But at least the films that, we, that I film, I produce, will actually highlight the issues that is happening right now. Mm -hmm. So here's a fairly young guy who's come on board and, you know, got onto um, the websites and the social platforms and trying to make videos um, that really perhaps step on people's toes, uh, open up their eyes, a tug at the heartstrings as well. Um, what kind of challenges have you faced once you've put your videos out there? The first time, um, I think to date we've made around 10 over films, 10 odd over films in, in a year. The challenging part is you expect them to understand, you see, when you do something, when you do a film and let's say this is the point, but people know that's the point, but they're trying to, they try to divert and try to find something wrong about the film. They don't understand the whole picture of it. It's like a whiteboard. It's like a white piece of whiteboard. And um, when you go to the, Euro when you in the Europe or the States, you know, when you ask them, you know, a beautiful whiteboard and there's a tiny dot and you ask them, what do you see on the whiteboard? What do you see there? Everyone will say, oh, it's a beautiful, it's a very beautiful whiteboard. It's nice, it's big. But the problem is when you bring it back to Malaysia and you show the whiteboard and the moment when, peop when Malaysians, when they see the, 
the whiteboard, the moment when you ask them, what do you see? Everyone goes right onto the black tiny speck of dust. Oh, that, we see the black dot on the um, whiteboard. And they totally forgot that that's a piece of whiteboard. And that's the problem. Um, that's the biggest challenge. Uh, so does that I mean face. we are perfectionists, or does that mean that uh, we just, uh, uh, you know, uh, and I say this generally, um, that you know, the the very negative in yeah. the way they perceive things. Maybe um, we lack apathy, and we don't have enough of uh, maybe I would say wisdom to actually understand. It. If we have more heart and more understanding, maybe. We might just get the point. We might just get the point. And this is what drives you to make those videos. Yes. This is what drives that passion for to you. See to see the change in people and to see things happening. Because I don't make money to make, I don't make films to make a living, sorry. I don't make films to make a living. And because I don't make a living out of it, and every film I do is more or less funded by my own pocket money. And I tell myself, this might be the last film I'm going to make, you mm -hmm. see, because I don't have any more money to make the next film. So every film I do, I give it 110%, and I literally use all my money to make the film. And I get, I, I get caught, I get thrown out, we get, we get a lot of um, questions, we get challenged here and there, we get so many obstacles. But in my, in, in my mind, I just tell myself, hey, you know, I'm not making a penny out of this, I might as well make the best out of it. So people ask me, Jason, what's your secret to making such films, you know, that goes viral? I mean, the answer is literally very simple. I treat every film like my last film. And, uh, and I'm scared. Before I make the film, I'm scared because I don't know what to film. And once I'm writing the film, when I'm scripting it, I'm scared. And why am I scared? To make sure that it, it nails the problem. And when I film it, I'm even more scared. Will I actually get it done? How many obstacles will I face on the live set? And once I film it, when I edit it, I'm, I'm logically very scared. And when I put it out into the public, that's when I get most afraid of. <laughs> so I'm, I'm scared, 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 and I freak out. And the least the public could do is to acknowledge yeah. yeah, but that's that's where your strength lies, I think. Um, uh, you know, challenging that fear. Yes. Uh, like you said, you've been scared throughout it, but you still took it upon yourself to release this video, to put together these thoughts. You've touched on um, a few different areas. Um, you know, that uh, issues that we have here in Malaysia, or perhaps you know even global. I'm sure it happens in most countries as well. Um, uh, you know, we've looked at, uh, you've done a, a video on the blind, uh, you've done another video called Heartless Malaysia. Now, of course, your latest is Born a Racist, yep. of course, touching that issue. Um, there were a few other videos I saw on your uh, website as well. Um, why have you gone to pick out these issues? Are these issues as a young Malaysian, is what you are seeing happening day to day outside? The platform where I used to uh, find my inspiration or why I decide to choose such topics or subjects is basically either it has either affected me personally mm -hmm. or I have seen it in the public personally or I see it as a topic which needs immediate attention towards so such as uh, racial issues such as the blind and such as uh, people with Down syndrome so these are a couple of films that I've made and I have actually have personal encounters with that actually um, affected me deeply and that's the reason why I spontaneously script it and I spontaneously film it. I don't take long to, make a f to, to script and uh, understand the film and film it. It takes, it takes really, uh, it, I mean for me it, it doesn't take much too long actually because I have the very impulsive uh, type of attitude which I say this is the problem, I'm going to fix it now. That's the problem. I'm going to fix it now because let's say right now the, the, the issue might be racist or racial issues. I see, the, I see the issue, I fix it now. I'm not going to wait for half a year to fix it. I'm not going to wait for one year to fix it. I'm going to fix it in the next 48 hours. Why? Because I'm afraid that the issue isn't an issue anymore after that 48 hours. So I have this sense of impulsiveness when it comes to making films mm -hmm. of such. And just like you, if you've experienced a few of these social issues that I'm sure many others out there, like our audience as well, may have felt the same way. Well, let's check out this particular video, which is uh, the latest video from Jason Lim Productions called Born a Racist.
What's your name? My name is Nimanat Kumar. My name is Julio Axel Wisingway. My name is Ryan Dino. How old are you? I'm 10 years old this year. Seven years old. Seven years old. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a paleontologist when I grow up. I want to be a firefighter. Actor. Why? I love digging fossils and I love dinosaurs. Because I want to rescue people. Not me spot car. This is Amelia. What do you like about Amelia? I like the hat she's wearing. She is so cute. I think she's friendly. Anything else? Everything. Make a funny face. Hug her. Now slap her. Slap her. Slap her. Why need to slap her? No. 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 It's not right to hurt people. It's not right to slap people. Pukorang salah. If Amelia had a different skin color with you, would you still be friends with her? Yes. Would you like to be friends with Amelia? Of course. Would you like to be friends with Amelia? Yes. But Amelia has a different skin color with you. How can you still be friends? I don't put the hammer. What's wrong with colors? What, what's the difference? Sama je. Is there a difference? Siapa cakap tu sama? Heartwarming indeed, as well as an eye-opener, Born a Racist, which is a short video. You might have caught it uh, perhaps on Facebook or any other social media platform. But if you haven't, then of course you can always uh, visit uh, the website, Jason Lim Productions, uh, to view more of these videos and to truly, truly understand what uh, Jason and his team are trying to do through the public service announcements, through the short videos, to really relate a message, something that's happening around us that we may not notice or perhaps even we might be guilty of. Of, of doing. I really like um, the next video we're going to show in a short while um, and uh, that is something uh, you know that when I first watched it I hadn't known about you or the company uh, but I watched and I thought wow whoever's doing this really gets it um, and, and so it's, it's interesting but let's talk about this video that we just saw Born a Racist. Um, so you've got four kids there yep. different backgrounds um, and they do not see color they do not see race no. religion they don't see any of that tell us about the video and that experience shooting that 
as you can see in the film, they're all colorblind. The children are all colorblind. And um, we adults, if we were given the same questions, we would have no way to answer these questions. A child can ask a wise man questions that a man cannot answer. It's impossible for him to answer. So we've decided to not willingly, uh, we're not going to ask an adult. So we're going to spontaneously, sorry, spontaneously ask a child and we don't know what the answer is actually, you know, we'll, we'll take the risk. So when we ask the children straight to the point, are you going to be friends with her? But you cannot be friends with her because, you know, we're a different skin colour. If you ask me, I would take time to think about the right answer and it will be a very complicated answer. But when you ask the three children, uh, the three children, uh, the Indian boy, the Malay boy and the Chinese boy, the answer What's the difference? That time, uh, I would say, my entire crew were just quiet. They were just in silence. It's like, that's right. What's the difference? What's the difference? And is and the Chinese boy, he would say, is there is there a difference with with the skin color? Is there a difference with color? And the Malay boy. And these are questions which adults will not ask, you know. Maybe us adults would ask, but not a child. Well, on that note, we're going to take a quick commercial break. But when we come back, do stay tuned. We'll be talking more to Jason Lim and about the short videos that he makes. Do stay tuned. Welcome back to The Nation. Thanks for joining us. Now, The Nation is a show that concerns all Malaysians all across the nation, of course. And today we're talking about the subject of the social issues uh, that happen around us. And sometimes we fail to notice them, or even if we do, then what? Uh, but there's one person who's making short videos going around trying to highlight these issues and hopefully it would spread more awareness on things like racism or animal abuse or you know giving a privilege to those who are less fortunate um, and so on and so forth I, I like your motto Jason um, that I found on your website which is making a change through making movies yes. or making films making, making films making, making change making films making a change um, and I think it's it's interesting to keep doing it it's not something you can just do once and you know it because it would get buried under the carpet sooner yes. or later but to keep doing it and i think with you doing this perhaps the youth of today the younger generation or as we can say the now generation will 
pick up from that and will start to emulate that as well. Uh, before the break, we saw uh, the video Born a Racist, which is of course available on YouTube if you'd like to go and uh, catch it as well. Um, and it featured four children uh, from different backgrounds and they were asked a simple question, if you would befriend a friend of a different colour. And they said things like, Sama saja, yep. what's the difference, right? Uh, but then halfway through that um, scripted interview, yep. you changed your script. Tell us what happened then. The start of the film was to literally create a bond with the children because um, it's difficult for strangers to just um, hug one another because this is not the culture in Malaysia as you see. So we created the bond of asking what do you like about this girl you see. I mean of course when you bring a, a young boy and a young girl they don't have ego they don't have, you know, I'm losing ego because of this and that, which adults, most of adults, the majority do, you see, oh, you know, we start, we start to judge people. But if it's a child, especially, you know, seven years old and a seven year old boy and a seven year old girl, when you put them together, they become friends immediately. Mm -hmm. They don't judge. So the, my, my main point was to make sure that both of them, regardless of their race, put them together. We make, we, we try to make them comfortable, which, which, which is each other and um, finally when they have the bond we feel that you know they've, they've actually warmed up a bit and um, I actually uh, proceed into the questions that I would like to ask so uh, things like please slap her and would you like to be friends with her even you don't have even you don't have the same skin color with you so um, those are the questions which I make sure that you know are actually answered which an adult can't answer. Right, on yeah. the spot, impromptu. Yes, impromptu, uh, yes. Neither your crew members nor the kids were expecting... No, the crew members actually knew that uh, I'm going to ask a question, but the crew members did not know, my, my cameraman did not know what sort of questions I'm going to ask. My main thing was to make sure that I capture their expression, their emotion, and to make sure that everything is in control and hopefully they don't slap the girl. Mm -hmm. I mean, after all, we're in Malaysia and... <laughs> Funny things can happen, so... Um, that yeah. would have been a bit of a nerve-wracking moment going, yes. oh, well, make sure, boy, don't do that. Yes. Um, but, you know, these issues, although we may, we may say always oh, scratching the surface, or, yeah, it's racism, yes, it happens, but it, it affects so many different parts of our lives. Yes. In school, at work, uh, you know, uh, it's so many different areas, yes. and which is why what makes it so, so important. What would you say, what is your view on on these issues? On racism, I think um, if, if your question is what I think on ra what, what I think about racism, I think racism is just an ins insecurity. It's a very insecure person which is not comfortable with his own skin colour. That's why they need to raise up the issue about colours so that they stand out and they have the attention. So racism is a very serious insecurity about themselves and they need attention they just attention attention seeking people that is not comfortable with their own skin color and that's why they go to extents of creating racial issues racial upstairs and um, it's kind of sad to, to see this sort of insecurity but after all we're human aren't we which is basically an issue that we can hopefully, to use the word, eradicate yes. forever, moving forward. Yes. Um, growing up, uh, you know, a lot of times they say, oh, it's the elders, they may have had some racism and then it's yeah. kind of, it's cascaded down towards yeah. the, the younger generation. Or then they, otherwise they say, well, the younger generation's grown up in such a, a different environment that they are racist. Um, what, what is it? Or is it um, on all layers of society? I'm glad, uh, Jesse, you brought this point. It's because um, recently I was uh, having this chat and um, someone told me, you know, you know, it's actually a parent, actually he's a parent, he says, Jason, I love your films. He didn't know I, I, was, I was the director of this film until he said, I, are you the director that made this film? I said, yes. I said, how do you know? I recognize your voice. We were in a cafe and he says that, you know, I like your films, but I don't like your films. Mm -hmm. And I said, what do you mean you like my films and you don't like my films? He says that your films makes me think. Your films make me think. And your films will make a change. But the problem is, parents like us, he, he points to himself, parents like us, 
are not willing to share this with our child. Because sometimes the problems of racism, actually the source is actually from the parents or from the older generation. And the older generation realizes the problem. And um, with such films, the open-minded parents were like, look, this is a racial issue. Uh, you know, I mean, maybe they'll put it in a different way, you know. There's no difference with skin color and they'll share it. But for some parents, which they are pretty much uh, in tune with the racial issues and uh, they do not want to accept that, you know, they're racist, they, they, they feel evoked by this sort of films and they feel that, you know, okay, I've seen this film, it's so powerful, it's so touching, but yet I'm not going to share this with my younger son or my younger daughter because I'm still racist. Mm -hmm. So these are the problems that, that we are facing at mm -hmm. the moment. Well, of course, a lot of uh, different things yes. to, uh, you know, that, that could amount to why they are, why they aren't. Um, but also, I think, uh, you know, in, 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 in respect of that, there are many who are not racist because they yes. grew up in a very different era, yes. an era where every, there were no racial issues no. to a uh, large extent there. But what is the opinion uh, of uh, your peers, the, the youth like, like your age? First of all, my peers from my age group, I mean, I'm not that young after all. So, um, <laughs> you look it. <laughs> <laughs> they're surprised. They're surprised why I have decided to touch on the racial issues. You know, it's, they tell me, no, Jason, you're going to get killed. You know, don't, it's very sensitive. It's very, please don't do that, Jason. You, you, we, want you make, we want you to make films, but please don't touch on racial issues because it's so sensitive and this and that. I said, everything is sensitive. It depends how you look at it. And um, if no one's going to touch on racial issues, well, I am. Because if no one's going to make a change, at least I try making a change. And uh, like the saying goes, I mean, this, this is not to, to, to the majority, but if you're not willing to light a candle in the dark, then don't complain about the darkness. But I believe there is a lot of people willing to light a candle, but there's still a majority of the people that is not willing to light a candle in the dark but everyone is complaining it's so dark in here it's so dark in here that's that's that that's the whole idea I mean you should do something and hope for a change and not sit there and complain that's not going to change anything it's wise words indeed you remind me of what um, uh, you know uh, one of the 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 advisors of all time from Gandhi he says be the change you wish to see in the world um, and you know you need to make that change wherever you are in your small community in you know your uh, you know your school your university your workplace wherever those small changes yes. and then it becomes a cycle and it, exactly. everyone ends up it's doing the, the smallest same thing. details in life that makes the biggest differences in life mm -hmm. and no one everything Everyone thinks that the biggest difference makes the biggest uh, differences. No, I mean, it's the smallest things and um, the smallest detail really counts. Well, of course, all these, um, um, all the shots that you have done, the short movies or short films, if you like to call it, um, have instigated, uh, you know, different uh, reactions from different people. Um, how did you go about thinking, oh, I'm going to do videos, uh, why not songs or, you know, why not art or something else? I came about doing uh, videos just when I when I found out that you know videos visually and audially it it triggers people's emotions and with the right chords it will make people cry or it will make people angry or it makes people sad. Why not make a horror? Why, why instead of making a horror film, making a comedy film, or making a, a romance story, why not make something real life? Something realistic and something now and not talk about 20 years before or 20 years after because we, we live in this generation it's 2015 now and a lot of people are talking about let's go to outer space let's dive under the ocean you know hundreds and thousands of feet but the problem the, the problem is is on the surface and we have not even solved the problem and people are trying to solve problems in other planets on Mars and that's the funny thing. So what, made me, what, what has made me and um, pushed me to make films is because um, every film that I have made till date, no one has ever clapped at the end of the film. Either they are left in a complete silence after watching my films or 
they're crying, they're, they're in tears, and that is the satisfaction I get. The moment of thought when people finish watching our films, the moment of thought gives me hope and gives the world hope to see that there is some chance, at least a speck of hope that we, can, we, we are able to change. And you've done all of that, you've encapsulated all of that in a short but sweet yes. uh, video. Um, and that is, I think, easy to watch, easy to follow, and very simple, very basic, yes. so that everyone can uh, follow and understand. While we're taking a quick break, do stay tuned. We'll be right back. And we'll be talking about Jason's um, other videos as well. So stay tuned. Semasa mengupas isu semasa, jadi saluran pelbagai suara, segalanya baru dan benar di Berita Bernama TV. Thanks for joining us right here on The Nation. Today, my guest in the studio is Jason Lim, uh, who's from Jason Lim Productions, producing short videos that uh, really um, give us something to think about, especially about social issues that are happening uh, around the world uh, today. Before the break, we talked a little bit about uh, the latest video called Born a Racist. Uh, but now let's talk about uh, the other video called Heartless Malaysians yes. um, that really, I think, uh, was shared a lot. Uh, how many hits did you have? On face, uh, across Facebook, we've got around approximately three million on the first uh, first week or so. In the first week, it yes. hit three million yes. uh, um, views, yep. and that means that it was talked about on all different uh, forms all of different. media. Yes. Uh, and of course, people sharing that more and more with the viral marketing that just went even further. But tell us, how did it come about, and what it's all about? Heartless Malaysians. Heartless Malaysians. Um, what actually instigated me to do that is um, after after a rally, actually. After a rally, I've seen Malaysians, they unite in the hundreds of thousands, you know, across the streets, you know. They show their unity, you know, when they're in a group, you see. When they're in a large group, they show unity and they show so much support for one another in the hundreds of thousands. So, I think, I think to myself, what happens when you split up everyone and it becomes individual. Will these people still unite? Well, let's take a look at the trailer right now, or rather the, the, the clip right now, and uh, let's see um, what the outcome was.
Now that wasn't just a short movie, that was an experiment to a large extent, right? Yes. Um, and we saw so many different reactions with people from so many different types of backgrounds. Yes. Tell us about that. How did you get the cameras on the LRT and um, how did you manage to shoot that? As again, um, I'm afraid to come up with the idea and I'm afraid to bring the cameras in. And um, we went in with a couple of cameras. We went in with we went in with uh, film cameras. We went in with um, smaller cameras, and uh, just in case one fails or someone drags us out of the, the one of the authorities drags us out of the uh, train, we'll still have other cameras rolling. So it was a challenge because the train was actually very uh, wobbly at times, and uh, there were lots of people in the train. So in order to get a close enough shot but not too close was a challenge and um, but the real challenge was getting my talents to sleep on someone else's shoulder I mean I would not sleep on a shoulder on a stranger in Malaysia knowing the fact that I'll get a you know get a bruised eye <laughs> or I'll get um, elbowed but which we saw as well we saw yes. many different reactions yes. uh, from uh, you know the people on the LRT um, we had the kind-hearted auntie yes. who really lent her shoulder yes. and then you had the man who thought it was okay to elbow yes um, and then you had um, the African-American or rather mm. the African guy uh, who uh, was uh, was willingly the willingly. coolest of all yeah the coolest of all what but does no this one, all mean um, the thing is, and all the uh, the funny thing is, you see, um, back to the African. He's in Malaysia, and the actor slept on his shoulder, and he was smiling, and he was he was shocked, but he was smiling. But initially, he was shocked, and he allowed him sleep after that. No one even gave him credit for that. On the comments on social nothing, media nothing. or anywhere? No, no one gave him comments. So this shows that most Malaysians, most of all, the majority, are very credit oriented people. They, they want credit. When you do this, I want credit. When you do this, I want credit. But the poor guy, you know, the African guy, I mean, he should, he should deserve a round of applause for, for letting a complete stranger from a different country sleep on his shoulder, lend a shoulder to him. And that's the, that's the secret of um, humanity. You, sh you should 
half hot, you know, heartless Malaysians, and he's not even a Malaysian, mm. and he is proving the point that you know it's okay to leave to to lend your shoulder on someone to sleep on. So again, I was um, back on uh, after I made this film, I was on a plane ride to uh, plane ride a, a flight to <laughs> Japan, and uh, there was this old man. I think he was seventy years old, or so, and um, he was. Th- I was in the center center seat and he was in the window seat and halfway through the flight he just slapped on my shoulder and were, oh oh I know this one <laughs> yeah when he slapped on my shoulder I was like his, his head was there and his whole head was here I was like it just I just remembered the film that I've made Heartless Malaysians I mean that was uh, I was on my way back from Japan you see and I said that he must be very tired and I did not want to be like those heartless people that just pushes his head away or I wouldn't want to nudge him I mean wh- why I mean it, it's a shoulder and I, I want to show that you know I have heart as well and the good thing is no one knows you see I mean some people some people allow people to sleep on your shoulder just for shows you see oh because I'm a good guy and I allow, allow him but on the plane right there was no one watching me I mean since I'm on national TV <laughs> now and everyone knows about it it's pretty good you see yeah. and they sleep on, on, on my shoulder and I tell myself it's a good feeling to do something nice as little as lending your shoulder for someone to lean on mm-hmm. and it feels good it does now we also saw the situation where we had the guy sleep on people's shoulders yes. and then the girl sleep on people's yes. shoulders those reactions too were different very different very different I mean Back on race, racial issues and sexism, I think everything plays plays in pretty well. So the girl, of course, is more favorable. I mean, who doesn't want a pretty girl to 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 lay on your shoulder? You see, regardless your race, ethnicity, or anything. I mean, oh, because she's a pretty girl, I allow. But because this guy has porcupine hairstyle, I am not allowing this porcupine to sleep on my shoulder. So it it derives to the point where. People are so subjective, you see. When, the, when, when, when you want to unite, I don't care whether you know, you're individually or hundreds and hundreds of thousands. You unite because you're humans, you know. I'm not asking you to be, you know, I'm not asking you to hug the person or whatever with that person. Just to be a good Samaritan. Just to be a good Samaritan, that, yeah. that's all. And out of that video, of course, um, we saw many different heroes, uh, but one of them was the Indian auntie. She was amazing. Tell us about that. That Indian lady, um, I think this is going to be the first time I, I, I'm going to share this on with, with anyone. This lady walked in, um, this lady was from Sarawak, and she, she walked in and um, she sat down and then, uh, of course, my, my, my talent was there. And after maybe uh, five odd seconds, she just laid her head onto the lady. The lady was shocked. She was looking across to her daughter. And while she was looking over to her daughter, her daughter was laughing and giggling away. And the mother was like, she just showed so much, so much compassion and love. And the first thing when we interviewed her, she says that she must be very tired. Let her sleep just let her sleep she must be very tired and the only thing she was worried was her the girl st- mm-hmm. whether she was miss her stop mm-hmm. you know so uh and the cool thing is that lady allowed my actor to sleep for at least 20 over minutes on the shoulder who in the right mind would allow someone to sleep on someone's shoulder for 20 odd minutes and in the end um it was I actually teared actually I actually teared because I was I was right in front of them and I was looking at them and the moment when I was holding my camera hidden camera and I was just speechless and the camera was, it kept on rolling and rolling and rolling when I saw my time it's 20 minutes when is she gonna wake yeah. her up my, yeah. my battery's running low yeah. <laughs> and I don't have any more time to 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 take the shot and um, she was amazing she was amazing I mean she, she her, her her love was just overwhelming and you can see that skin color color is not the issue there it's whether are you racist or not racist that that, that that's very important yeah well we're going to take a quick uh, break and our final break before uh, we conclude our discussion right here on social issues and how they can be highlighted through um, you know short videos as well do stay with us
Today, a daily lifestyle morning variety talk show that touches on current topics in Malaysia and around the world. Also featuring compact interviews with guests from various backgrounds. Don't forget to tune in to Channel 502 live from Mondays to Fridays. If you just joined us, then my guest in the studio is Jason Lim from studio, uh, Jason Lim Productions, and um, he, of course, uh, has uh, made short videos or short movies that highlight some of the social issues that are happening uh, in the country and perhaps even globally uh, as well. Um, and now we want to talk about your other video called Are You Blind? Are You Blind? And yes. this is a not a very short video because it's got two parts. Yes. Um, and. Uh, What's interesting is it, it features a certain segment of the community, but at the same time, it, it did stir a little bit of um, yes, drama. It, it stirred <laughs> a lot of drama, uh, to, be, to be precise. This film, Are You Blind? Um, what actually instigated me to make this film is because of um, blind people in Malaysia. And um, I realized that there's more blind people than real blind people in Malaysia. And that's what made me make this film, produce this film. This film is literally about how a blind person, how can he possibly survive in Malaysia if he doesn't have the right assistance or tools to go around Malaysia? Because most of the, uh, most of the um, public accessible places in Malaysia are not blind friendly. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, of course, this stirred the interest to do that. Yes. And how did you get started on it? And what was the feedback that you got from Are You Blind? Um, again, because this film um, needed quite a substantial fund to, to film, and uh, I've, made, uh, I've made a lot of um, inquiries of getting sponsorship and um, collaborators. And most of them come up to me and said, uh, Jason, uh, you know, again, this is, uh, this is not a good idea. You see, it's just not a good idea because it involves a dog and it involves blind people. And uh, Malaysia is not, is not set to assist or not set to accommodate blind people of such. And most of but the... But in this yeah, day and age, that, that's still something people say? 2015 in other countries, maybe it's nice. But 2015 in Malaysia still needs a lot of improvement to be honest still mm -hmm. needs a lot of improvement so the story revolves around a, a fairly elderly man yes a fairly elderly man from a, from a young boy uh -huh. until he is old okay so you yeah. go through that that part of his life yes it's a transition and, when he becomes older and he has with him a guide dog yes as animals do help um, yes a guide you dog know, uh, those who are blind and um, and then what happened? Because you were stopped by some people, weren't yes, you? Yes, we were, we were actually stopped by a lot of people. Um, when you're young, the mum could actually assist the mum. Let's say the blind boy is 17. The mum can take the boy, his son around and say, Hi son, this is an apple, this is an orange. But when he's 50 years old, his mum, I don't think, is no longer on planet Earth. I think she, she's, she's, a go she's gone by then, you see. So when it comes to 50 year old, when, when the blind person is around 50 years old, what happens then, you see? Are people willing to help him 
in Malaysia, ask yourself, are you willing to help a blind man cross the road? Or have you helped a blind man cross the road before in your life? So the thing is, we've put it in a way that, let's say the blind man has a guide dog and the guide dog goes into public spaces, you know, non-restricted places such as a bus, a taxi, and the shopping mall. See what happens next, you see. And all of, every single time, or most of the time, unsurprisingly, they were stopped in every single, every single junction. The bus, they were kicked down. They were, the, the blind man was literally kicked off the bus with the dog two front paws on the bus. The bus just started moving. Oh. That could have ripped the dog apart. Yeah, yeah. And the taxi asked him to shut the door and just shouted, no, 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 tutup, 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 tutup. And the last one was the uh, shopping mall. And um, no one actually handled the blind man correctly from head to toe. Mm -hmm. Well, we see the video here and um, let's just take a quick Ever look. Ever wondered how it would be if you were blind? How many of us has ever helped a blind man cross the road? Have you? Is it far enough? Yes. There's a reason I chose him to, to dismiss the racial issue. To those watching this film, it's Marco Robinson, minimum. Have you ever thought how blessed you are with sight? How many? Well, there you go. Uh, that's a clip uh, from Are You Blind, which is, has two parts, and you can watch that uh, online as well on YouTube or via the website. Um, tell us about that, uh, that scene that we see where um, the foreigner is helping uh, the blind man cross the road. This, the scene of the foreigner crossing the road, I think that not many people are willing to uh, help a blind man cross the road. Uh, needless to say, before I made the film, I've never actually helped a blind person before cross the road until the point when I literally blindfolded myself for a couple of days to feel how it would feel like to be blind. I can tell you, it's, it's extremely insecure everything you don't even want to stand up when you're blind and given the fact that you have a world out there a whole a whole world out there and there is so little things in braille you can't even access a bus you can't even access a taxi you can't even run into a shopping mall and there is no braille on the on on, on the on the um pavements and even if it's braille there's a pothole there with a pothole cover not close. So yeah. the dangers of everything in Malaysia is sits so high that people stay at home, you see. The thing is, what's being what's what's worse? Having sight but no vision. That's a very sad thing. Most of the companies in Malaysia, they have sight. The authorities have sight. But do they have vision? That's a whole different story. Well, kudos to you, uh, Jason, for Thank doing you. what you do and trying to highlight where our shortcomings yes. are. And hopefully we can fill this gap and make this gap smaller and smaller and smaller till there is no more uh, gap uh, through your videos and the message that you're trying to send across. Um, as a parting note, what would you like to say to all our audience uh, watching today? As a parting note, I think everyone would like to make a change in Malaysia or maybe around the world. I would say that be the one willing to light the candle and not just complain about the darkness. I think that's very important. As long as you can light the candle and make a slight change, I think the world will be a better place. And there's a lot of nice people around the world. There's a lot of nice people. If you cannot find one nice people, be one. <laughs> well, that's 
kudos to you for the work you do again. And Thank you, Jessie. You are not just a filmmaker or producer, but a representative of your generation, you. uh, if not the Malaysians at large. Um, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks, Thanks for Jesse. watching and uh, have a wonderful day ahead. And remember, be that candle in the dark. Bye-bye.